Hello, Ryan here, and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all of the news from the week just past. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get on with it. This week, the ship showdown begins. We see the latest on the Origin 100 series, plus Chris Roberts has a lot to say on Spectrum. So kicking off this week's Inside Star Citizen, we got to see the Origin 100i. This is Origin's starter ship option, which is coming in Alpha 3.11. We have the 100i, the 125a, and I think the 135c. I should have looked that up before I started recording. Now these are sleek and compact, and they didn't actually change much in terms of design from concept to final in-game versions. They managed to keep them very much like the concept. The interior is well self-contained from cockpit to the bed and living area and even your components. The dashboard is using the new physicalized dashboard in which every button can be interacted with. The 100i series will be the first ship to use this new format and this is what Chris Roberts was talking about when he said how cockpits will feel more DCS style. No random aesthetic buttons, all of the buttons will eventually have a purpose and a use and be functional. Now the seat in the cockpit has been risen slightly to accommodate the landing gear, which actually they said helps to provide a bit more of a separation from the living space and the cockpit. Most of the components are located with inside the ship, which is actually very useful for a ship of this size. Usually small ships have external component access, so the fact that you can access them internally means you'll have them right on hand to access, to repair, to swap. The quantum drive is on the outside, as you can see here, but this means you won't have to do a spacewalk to fix things up if you are stranded in space. Now the bed folds out nicely from the wall. You can obviously keep it inside and it keeps it nice and tucked away. This means that you will be able to log out in this ship as well, which is great for a starter ship. They have built bespoke missile launchers, which are tucked away underneath to the front of the ship. But with the 125A having an extra larger missile launcher at the rear of the ship as well, all of them can be completely hidden away until needed, which kind of gives more of the, the pleasing aesthetic that Origin are known for. Now, personally, the 100 series never really appealed to me at first, but seeing them now, it looks very well made, and as a second tier starter ship, it is likely going to be a very useful first ship for someone. Or maybe even just a compact runaround, a bit like how I use my Avenger Titan as an all-rounder. This is kind of like a more upmarket version of that. Whether it'll be as effective as the Titan in combat, we'll have to wait and see. But I may purchase one of these in-game. I'm actually quite liking them now. Uh, as I say, these 100 series ships will be coming in Alpha 3.11, which is sort of slated for the end of this month. So we'll see how that gets on. Anyway, moving on to the second part of Inside Star Citizen, they looked at the building blocks front-end conversion. This sets them up for future iteration and expansion much quicker and easier as and when they need it, rather than having to wait for a dedicated UI team member to schedule time in. So we got to see how the new front end screen is coming along. They're keeping it as clear and clean as possible so that they can share some of the nice background scenic shots. And the end goal, they said, is to have the screen with a character selection in the middle so you can see your character on screen. Now that's nothing new or nothing major, but I do think it'll be a nice touch for this game. As you hover over each option, it'll play a little video and provide a short description. Great for new players coming in to understand more of what the options provide. You can collapse the friends and notification menus as well, pinning them to the sides, which is a nice touch. And as you click through, you can see the first drop down determines whether you want to go to the universe or the hangar. And from there, it opens up to location selection. And each time you click on one of the locations, be it New Babbage, Area 18 or Hurston, It'll give you a little visual and description of the location. Again, very helpful for new backers who may not know what each area offers. One very nice quality of life update is they have added a clear all button to clear away all of your notifications in one go rather than having to click on the X's. So that is excellent. So as I say, this new building blocks conversion allows them to change things so much faster uh, and come to the best option without having to go back and forth. It's much more streamlined, which has been one of the biggest wins for this new building blocks tech in all areas. And it places the full front end, which everything hooks up into, into a modular system that can be expanded on really quickly. For example, if they wanted to add a new game mode like Theatres of War, it is just a single button that can go straight in and be implemented super quick. Anyway, that was Inside Star Citizen. So not the most exciting, but it was nice to see the Origin 100 series. Very much looking forward to checking them out in 3.11.
So also this week there was a new portfolio post highlighting the Max Ox manufacturer. The Squadron 42 monthly report was released to the Spectrum, but do not worry, I have covered this already in a separate video, which I've linked below. If you have not noticed, the ship showdown kicked off and is now in full flow, in which you can vote on your favourite ship and crown one ship, the overall best ship in the verse. This is a multi-day event which not only opens up a free fly should you want to check out the game for yourself completely free, you just need an account, but it also gives you access to all of the 16 ships currently in the running for the voting. This gives you access to the Prospector Mining Ship, the Multicrew Expedition Explorer Karak, the 890 Jump Super Yacht, as well as some cool dedicated fighters. So if you only have a starter package or not even a package at all, now is a great time to get in. Also, if you do decide to get the game, firstly, welcome. And secondly, there is a limited time sale in which you can get a discounted starter package. If you do decide to sign up and create an account, though, be sure to use the referral code linked in the description below to get yourself 5,000 United Earth credits, which is your in-game currency, completely free, plus a little kickback for the code owner. This week's Star Citizen Live was a live vote and discussion for the ship showdown in which devs vote on their favourite ship. I didn't do a breakdown for this as there was nothing to be learnt, it was more just personal opinion based on each ship. But I have linked it below as usual should you want to watch it for yourself. And finally, if you haven't heard, over on Spectrum, Chris Roberts jumped on to answer a question and explained a little bit about some of the systems that are in the works right now and currently getting implemented that will affect things like multi-crew and the upcoming engineering mechanic. Plus, he spoke a little about the game and how it's being built and why some of the decisions and priorities have been made. Now, I have covered the engineering scenario highlighted by Chris Roberts in a separate video yesterday, which can be found linked in the description below. I highly suggest watching it if the idea of the engineering mechanic and multi-crew is something that you're excited for, as it really delves into how this mechanic in this system will work. As for the rest of what he said, I will cover that in a separate video sometime next week, so do keep an eye out for that one. So that brings us to the end of the show. If you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Also, I am able to do this thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. If you appreciate what I do and would like to help make it even better from as little as $1 a month, all of the links are provided below.